Okay, everyone. So now we are learning the controls. We know that there is a toolbox which is available in the .NET. So from this toolbox, there are various items available. Just like we are having button, we are having checkbox, combo box. Now these all items which are available into the toolbox, they are called as the controls. These controls we are going to drag and drop inside the form. So whenever we create a form in the .NET, we drag and drop few controls. Now these controls are having their own properties. Just like if we talk about the button, we click on the button, then some action perform. Then we are having the label. We we'll click on the label and afterward we can provide some text to the user. So similarly, we are having the list view. If you want to provide the picture, we are having the picture box. You want to provide the progress, progress bar. So in the toolbox, in the .NET, there are various items available. Those items are called the controls. Now we are going to discuss the different, different controls. The first control which we are discussing is the label. Whenever we are going to display any text to the user, then this label comes. Let us suppose that if I want to show some message to the user on the form that enter a number. Now that is called the label. The next control is link label. Whenever we are going to provide some hyperlink so that whenever you click on the text, a new page open that is called the link label. You can see that there is a bar which is available at the bottom. Now that means it is a hyperlink. So you can click on that and a new page will open. Next control is button. Whenever we want that, if we click on some button an action perform, then we use this control. Button is having the event property so that we can click on the button and specific code will run. Just like if you want to submit some form or if you want to say go to the next page or the previous page. So for that, we take out the button. The next control in the toolbox is radio button. Radio button is having some circular shape. We know that sometimes there are options given to us just like tell me your gender, just like male, female. Now out of that two circles are available. So you have to click on one circle. So at one time you can click on only one. So that is called the radio button. So from multiple option, you can select only one option that is called the radio button, just like from male, female, or maybe in which class you are 10th and 12th, because you cannot be at two places at one time. So that means from multiple option, you can select only one. So that is called the radio button. The next control we are having is checkbox. Checkbox is having the square shape. It is exactly reverse of the radio button. Now, let us suppose that if I ask you to select the hobbies, any person can be having the multiple hobbies. So this is the checkbox. Let us suppose that there are five hobbies given. Maybe let us suppose we are having music, dancing, cooking, fishing or singing. Now out of that, you can select the multiple options. So this is called the checkbox where we can select the multiple options. So you can select multiple checkbox at a time. The next control is text box. This is very common control. Whenever we are creating a form at that time, we can provide this text box. We can ask the user to input something or we can even display something to the user in this text box. This text box is having the feature that anybody can edit this. Let us suppose that if I want to provide my name here, now I can simply write my name. Let us suppose that Ankit here. Now afterward, this text will be taken. Let us suppose that I don't click on some button. So this text box is used to take the input or it can also provide the output through the coding. Next control is the list box. Whenever we are going to provide the multiple items, let us suppose that we are going on the grocery shop and we are purchasing multiple items from there. Now those items can be easily mentioned there into the list box. Just like you are supposedly providing the item A, then afterward item Z or maybe item X. Now these are the multiple items you have purchased. You want to show those items easily with the help of the list box, you can show them. So this is the list box. Next control is combo box. Combo, that means it is a combination of two things. It is the combination of text box as well as the list. We can see that here it is just like the text box. So we can write something here simply. Let us suppose that you want to provide something A, B. So you simply you can write here or if you want that there is some set of list is provided out of that you select. 
Now we can see that on the corner there is the drop down arrow. So if you click on this arrow then it will be like the drop down list. So this list will expand and here multiple options will be coming just like we are having let's say AW or maybe XY. So out of these options we can select any option. So this combo box is the combination of text box and the list. We should understand that if in our form we don't have so much space to provide the list then we can simply take this combo box because after selecting this drop down button it will be simply extended and here we can select the multiple options just like whenever you are going to fill your form then sometimes you have seen that they are giving you the country option you select on the drop down and they give you multiple options like multiple countries so you select the one and after you click ok so this is how the combo box work so it will be a drop down list out of that you can select the one option next control is group box group box is used to group the similar type of items just like we suppose that there are four radio buttons we know that radio buttons will be selected only one now let us suppose there are two radio buttons out of that one is for male and one is for female now they belong to one group so they should be created as the one group box now let us suppose that other two radio buttons they are for 10th and 12th now they are the separate category so for that we need two group boxes one group box for male and female and one group box for 10th and 12th so this group box just combine the similar types of controls just like out of these two male and female one should be selected and out of 10th and 12th one should be selected so we need different different group boxes because these radio buttons are different so group box is used to combine the similar type of controls next control is picture box whenever you want to display some kind of picture let us suppose that some scenery or maybe your picture or maybe some kind of image then you need the picture box now that image will be displayed over here in between so that is the picture box where you can display the image next control is edge scroll bar edge scroll bar stands for horizontal scroll bar here we can see that we are having the two arrows available one for the left and second for the right whenever we are having some kind of document which we want to scroll so this is the some kind of button which we can click and scroll it here on the right hand side or on the left hand side so this way we can scroll or we can simply click over on the left or the right button so this way we can scroll horizontally left or the right so this is called the horizontal scroll bar or the edge scroll bar next control we are having is the v scroll bar that stands for vertical scroll bar if you want to scroll up and down for that we use the vertical scroll bar similar as the horizontal scroll bar here we are having the arrows but these arrows are into the different direction one is going for the upward and one is going for the downward so these are the two arrows available now we can simply click on these arrows and move up and down here we are having some kind of button which we can click and scroll it up and down so this way we can scroll a document for the upside or the downside so whenever you want to scroll a document then we need the vertical scroll bar or the v scroll bar many of the times if we are working on the pdf or the word document we have seen that both the scroll bars are available one scroll bar is for moving up and down that is called the vertical scroll bar and one scroll bar is for the moving left and right document that is called the horizontal scroll bar the next control is tool strip we know that many of the times whenever we open some application on the top we are having a toolbar available now that toolbar is nothing but the tool strip in this tool strip we are having the multiple icons which are like the shortcuts like we are having the save save all cut copy paste so these type of buttons are available so this type of toolbar we can create into the dotnet with the help of the tool strip the next control we are having is the menu strip we know that on the top even above the toolbar 
वी आर हैविंग द मेन्यू नाउ दैट मेन्यू बार वी कैन इजिली क्रिएट विद द हेल्प ऑफ द मेन्यू स्ट्रिप हेयर वी कैन प्रोवाइड द फाइल मेन्यू एडिट मेन्यू व्यू मेन्यू प्रोजेक्ट मेन्यू सो मल्टीपल टाइप ऑफ मेन्यूज कैन बी क्रिएटेड एंड दिस मेन्यू बार वी कैन इजिली क्रिएट विद द हेल्प ऑफ द मेन्यू स्ट्रिप द नेक्स्ट कंट्रोल वी आर हैविंग इज द स्टेटस स्ट्रिप वी नो दैट एट द बॉटम we are having the status bar now that status bar can be created with the help of status strip we know that here we can provide the time and we can also provide the date so date time or different different icons we can provide and they are having their own purpose so that we can easily create so this status bar can be created with the help of status strip next control is a list view if you want to provide the list of items we can easily provide them some of the size let's say we want to provide them into the bigger size smaller size or we can provide them into the details now all those options are available into the list view so let us suppose that we have provided two items here one is anketan and one is varma now these items we can easily represent in the large icon small icon so everything is possible means in the display we can provide at the multiple options so that is the list view the next control is tree view whenever we are having tree type of structure that is called the tree view many of the times we are going on our system and we can see that in the c drive we are having multiple folders so similar way we can be having this tree view just like we can see that here is the minus minus means it is expanded so here is the name inside the name again we have expanded that means this is ankit inside that we are having varma so this is the expanded view or here also we are having the minus that means this is the expanded view this is subject in the subject we are having the dot net so we can see that this is one inside the another so that is called the tree view whenever we click over there in this minus and it is again compressed then it will be converted back to plus plus means it is the compressed minus means it is the expanded so this is the tree view the next control is panel let us suppose that we are having the form now this form if you want to divide into multiple parts let us suppose that we want to create two parts here now we need two panels so one panel that will be the above and we need panel 2 so here this panel control is to divide the form into multiple parts let us suppose that in your form you are having two phases one is for the address and one is for the qualification so one area you will make for the address and you will create one panel and you will put all the controls inside that and other area you are having for the let us suppose some other thing maybe the qualification so here you are going to take another panel and you will take out all those fields which are required so all the control will be pasted so panels are required and these panels are required for dividing the form into different different parts the next control is timer we know that there are some kind of code which are running into the background so for that we use the timer let us suppose that when somebody start the program and you want that your program should stop after exactly 30 minutes so you can start the timer for the 30 minutes and after that program will close or let us suppose you are giving some online exam now that online exam is designed by some company now what that company is doing they are going to provide a timer so whenever you start the exam at that time the timer start when the timer count over let us suppose that 40 minutes after that your form will be automatically submitted so that is how the timer work this timer is the background control you cannot see the timer into the front end coding it is onto the back end so you can drag and drop the timer now this timer will be going on the behind you can code that so this is the timer control now we are discussing the properties and methods of these controls controls are having various properties and methods but out of that we are discussing few properties and methods the first one is the back color if you want that a specific control should be having a color in the background so that is called the back color then the four color we know that every control is having some kind of text now that text which color should be there that is called four color then is size a control just like text box 
can be having which size. So their height and width we can define. So that is the size. Then is enabled. Enabled is true and false. Means the control is visible to you. But is it working or not? So if it is working, that is enabled true. If it is not working, that is enabled false. So for the user, it is enabled or not. That is enabled. Then is visible. If you want that, some of the control is not showing to the user. It is in the hidden mode. So that is the visible false. So you can make the visible property as false. Next one we are having is location. If you want to provide a specific place where that control should be defined. So that is the location property. The next one we are having is font. If you want to define that your control should be having specific type of font like what is the size, what should be the font style, bold, italic. Now that is the font. Then is the maximum size. So what maximum size it can achieve? Let us suppose that you are going to maximize your form or minimize your form. Now in those cases, what will be the maximum size of your control or the minimum size of your control? That can be defined by these maximum size and the minimum size. The next one we are having is hide. If you want to hide certain control, show. If you want to show certain control. Now showing and hiding, that is also the part of these properties and methods. Then the next one is select. If you want that, your control is selected. And at that time you want to perform certain action. Now that is the select property. So these are certain properties and methods of the control.